All right, we're going to go over a few problems here on page 131. We're going to start with number nine, a two-column proof. So I need you guys to have both columns here. I know this is, looks like the only part you need to fill out, but you've got to get in that habit of having both columns. Um, obviously, there are statements on the left and then reasons on the right. Kind of usually we start with the given and then we try to get to the finish line. Now, with this finish line, this is what we're trying to prove. Why would angle 1 be equal to angle 3? So that's where you notice it's right there at the finish. That's when you're done with the end of the problem. So you're trying to figure out why would this angle be equal to this angle here. First of all, they're going to start with step 1. Obviously, we're going to try to get to step 5. Line A and line B are parallel. Well, that's given. So we've got parallel lines. So we've got these two lines going left to right that are parallel. When two lines are parallel, certain angles are equal or certain angles are supplementary. Because the lines A and B are parallel, 2 and 3, and I just kind of made a miniature version, these two are supplementary. They add up to 180. Why is that? Well, this is called same side angles theorem, which basically says if two lines are parallel, then the same side interior angles add up to 180, same side interior. Step three, line CD, the lines going up and down, are parallel. Well, that's also given. So if you've got lines that are C and D that are going parallel up and down, certain line angles are congruent, or in this case, step four, certain angles like one and two are supplementary. Same reason. Since these two lines going up and down, C and D, are parallel, 1 and 2 add up to 180 because of same side interior angles. When lines are parallel, same side interior angles add up to 180. Then finally, they go, well, why would angle 1 be equal to angle 3? And you're really going to use a combination of step 2 and step 4. Let's read step 2 real quickly. It says angle 3 and 2 are supplementary. And step four says angle one and two are supplementary. And then it says one is equal to three. So you've got three supplementary to two. You've got one supplementary to two. And now you're going to say one and three are equal to each other. Well, we haven't used this theorem in a while, but this is called congruent supplementary theorem, which basically, I'm misspelling that. I drew a picture of it here below. If angle A and B are supplementary and angle C and B are supplementary, they're supplementary to the same angle, then these two, angle A, must be equal to C. They are congruent because they are supplementary to the same angle. 3 is supplementary to 2. 1 is supplementary to the same angle. And so that makes these two equal. Step 5. Okay, I'm going to just do the setup for 14 and 15. I'm not going to go all the way here. It looks like 14, you've got a maybe a trapezoid there. 15, you've got a triangle here. And we've been dealing with all of these parallel lines. And now all of a sudden, we've got a triangle. We've got a trapezoid. The next picture, 16, we've got a four-sided figure. The key really is the fact that you do see these parallel lines. And so, yes, you see a triangle here. And yes, you see a four-sided figure. But really, just focus in on the parallel lines. And if it helps extend those lines or just redraw it like this and I extended this transversal here this is x plus 40 this is x well now if you just block out this part of the picture you're no longer thinking of a trapezoid you're just looking at parallel lines this is the interior these are same ss same side interior angles so these two angles should add up to 180 but again, you are trying to basically break away from the visual, oh, this is a trapezoid. Well, what's the formula for trapezoid? No, this is really about parallel lines. They just add extra stuff here to confuse you. So this line here is really just to confuse you. You're just focusing on the parallel lines. Same with this triangle here. There's triangles here. So you might be thinking, well, what's the formula that I use for triangles? They're given this angle, this angle. Really, just focusing on these parallel lines here. And so if I just extend these parallel lines and extend the transversal, so really I'm just going to block this part out here visually, not even use this line. I have this angle here, which is x plus 
40. I have this angle here, which is 3x minus 10. Now, if you look at these parallel lines, ignore the fact that it's a triangle. These are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are equal. So you would just simply say this angle here is equal to this angle here. x plus 40 is equal to 3x minus 10. So when you get to 14, 15, 16, try to block out some of the image there. Don't really look at it as a four-sided figure. Look at it as a parallel line. Don't really look at this as a triangle. Look at it as parallel lines. Okay, here is problem number 24. Uh, we have a lot of letters to go over here. We've got to solve for V. We've got to figure out what that is. W, X, and Y. There is no Z here. Okay, you've got parallel lines which forces certain angles to be equal. So like this 42 is an alternate interior angle to this V. So because of alternate interior angles, V is also 42. Again, you've got these lines that are parallel. Whoops, excuse me. These lines that are parallel, 42 is equal to V. Um, if you look at the W, that's alternate interior angles with the 25. So this is 25. X. This is alternate interior angle 1, 2, 3 with this one. 1, 2, 3. So X is 76. Now what in the world would Y be? Okay, so let's kind of redraw this picture here. I'm not going to have all the crisscrossing information. What I do know, though, is this angle where the dot is, is made up of two angles. It's made up of 42 plus whatever W is. W is 25. So 42 plus 25, again, this is 25 degrees. That is 67 degrees. So this entire angle here is 67 degrees. That makes this 67 degrees. And when you have a parallel lines every which way, these are same side interior. They, don't, they are not equal, so don't say this is 63 where the two red dots is. But same side interior adds up to 180. So what is this? I'll just call this a Q for now. So 67 plus Q is equal to 180 degrees. So Q is, what is that, 113? All right, now if I look back at this entire angle here, which I called Q, is 113. So to figure out what y is, I've got to minus out the 76. 113 minus 76. Let's see what that says in the calculator. 37 degrees. Okay. And then, of course, this would also be 37 degrees down there. Use same side interior angles to help figure out that cube.